Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of the Mega 64 Show live. You're here with Mega 64. How you doing? Happy I'm Friday. Happy Friday. Thank God uh, it's, uh, sorry, thank goodness it's Friday. All right, now that we started the show, why are you dressed like Tao Pai Pai? Uh, well, you know, what? I'm starting to live my true self what and is? I am just, I'm cosplaying, Sean. That's what it is. And that tone isn't the questions and everything you ask kind of with that kind of demeanor. Are you okay? Uh, he's so, ready. To, he's I think to, I really caught him off guard. Look, he, right. he, he hit me. No, you guys got me on the defense. You, you, you throw me under the bus like that right away. Look, I didn't. Even, what are you he, talking he about? He is dressed like Dragon Ball villain Tao Pai Pai. Oh. And I was just curious. I was just curious. Hey, you know what? It. Read the back, fellas, and, uh, and watch says, out. It says, kill you. Kill you. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's like, I don't like that. That's like the tell Pi Pi. I do like that. It's a a pink shirt. It says kill you on it. Actually, you do do like, I do like that. That's cool. All right. It's up there with bad man. It's up there, right? Kill you. Well, I got something in the next couple of weeks. You're going to (laughs) love. All right. But why are you dressed like, why do you have that shirt? School shooter vibes. I'm just like, I'm living my cosplay dreams now. Like why save it for anime expo when I can, just go to, out to the uh, post office box, uh, you know, hit the grocery store. Like the new come, suffix you come, put on post office. <laughs> come to work as uh, my favorite character. I've never heard of that from one. From a beloved franchise. Oh, you haven't? Rocco's got figures of Tao Pai. Pai Pai. Yes. Is that from Z? Nope. No. Oh, no that's that's OG Dragon Ball. Oh, that's why I don't know it. Yeah. 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 He, haven't he, seen those figures. Where are they? My uh, my off. Oh, I have one at my, uh, in the office, one at home. Yeah, I have one everywhere that I reside. I don't think you do have one in the office. Because I would have seen it. Uh, There's a lot you haven't seen in this office. Yeah. Yeah, where are you hiding those figures? They're not there. It's that one's readily on display. Okay, next so to the dragon. You know what? The big dragon. While we're while we're in the middle of a theme song, Rock is going to go pull this out because I don't think he no. has it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the challenge has been issued. Or or like even this. better, let me try to find it. Okay. <laughs> theme song. Uh, right. he, he couldn't find it. Derek's looking. He is. I'm hearing a lot of clatter. A lot of from there breaking. Probably not the figures. Probably no, some of the breaking. But. I think he got into your glass case because I heard uh, it was like Stone Cold Steve Austin mm. in there. Rocco yeah. doesn't have a glass case. Yeah, so he's breaking. You something do else. though. You have many glass cases. Yeah, I like to keep my figs behind glass. It, I kind of made a rule where I wasn't going to display stuff that wasn't in a case. Oh. When I did a little redecorating a year ago, so you have, yeah, but it looks like nice. It's like nice I had cases. to buy a shit ton more cases. What do you get cases I, like that? IKEA or some shit? Yeah, well, honestly, before the pandemic, yeah. Rocco, do you have any desire to put those into did, case? Like wait, that? did something happen in the pandemic? What it happened? became so hard to just get during the pandemic. Everyone was stuck at home. Everyone yeah. started remail, like remodeling, yeah. redecorating, yeah. yeah. And when very few stores were open, Ikea's were, and uh, especially for online pickups, yeah, they were just out. They yeah, Ikea was out. out of everything. I- everything popular. All their popular items were just, yeah, gone. I remember my mom wanted a very specific shelf. She's like, I've got one spot. It will perfectly fit one type of shelf they have, so I'm going to order that. This was yeah. dur- early in the pandemic. And it was it, like on their website, it was like, ah, we can get it to you next June. It's like June, June, June next year. Yeah. Wow. What? What? That's so far. It, you couldn't even think about it. That happened to me so, because I had half of my stuff for the remodel like built uh, yeah. bought. Yeah. And then the pandemic happened. And yeah. when I went to go buy the second half, which was I need these cases to match. Oh. I need I need the Millsboro. And yeah. it was it was like you said, oh, yeah, June next year. So uh, my mom did that. I, she just brought it like, OK, yeah, I'm going to. All right, fine. And ordered it and then just forgot. And then like clockwork, June 2021 <laughs> or whatever. It showed up. Hey, your shelf shipped. It was like, what? Oh, I forgot. Oh, OK. Like kind of called their bluff, but they, they did it. They as, were on as it. planned. 
Uh, they they then raised the prices when everything kind of went back to mm-hmm. like okay we can keep these in stock and in store now. I feel like everything went up a hundred dollars at least. Everything, but but the case was a four. It was like a two hundred dollar case. It's no. like I it's, it's like a three hundred fifty dollar case now. It's like that. Would you ever put your stuff behind glass, Rocco? Or is that uh, I do? like having access to? I like if I have like display figures. I like to. I know it'll get dustier. You know whatever, but. I, I hate when I can't like, oh, I want to like take that off. I want to like repose that. I'm mm. like, I don't know. I just like always yeah. wanted that out. Copy, play except, with except, except, except uh, I was going to get a glass case for all my like, all the crap I accumulated from the Star Wars hotel. Oh, that, that like, like that I got like, museum. I got all these like documents and <laughs> stuff from like, like the, the captain left a note under the door and like stuff like that. Oh, like yeah, I, yeah. I want to put all that in a case. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I'm just Sorry kidding. you asked. Well, I'm not. I'm just curious, you know, because you have a lot of figures and no case. He has the case and a lot of figures too. You know, I'm not doing glass cases. That's not my jam. No, but, you know, you've got a wardrobe with some of your favorite shirts. Yeah, I'm sure a wardrobe. Yeah, I've seen that wardrobe out in your garage. You keep oh, all your yeah. Mega Sixty Four shirts in there. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the records are in there now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hermetically sealed, kind of like keep yeah. the humidity down. Yes, yes. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's what I do. Anyways, cheers, everyone. Preserve, Good morning. Preserve the collection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you find it, Derek? The figure that you're looking for? I was getting coffee. Oh. oh. You thought... were supposed to get the figure. Yeah, By the way, I shit. leave my figures out and yeah. I'll open, like Rocco, on display. Yeah. I want access to play with them figures. If it's sealed know. away, it might as well look at it through the computer screen. I, I mean, uh, what's, what's... Was, you know, was making figures for a long time, so that's mostly what my display is. is no, oh yeah, all the things. homemade stuff. That's cool. Do you still do that? Uh, no, actually, it's been two years since I've uh, done really any it's been crafting. Almost wow. exactly September twenty twenty two. Two. Wow. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. It's been that long. I have an unfinished Furby that I was oh. working on. It's the last thing you know. I just walked away one day, never to return. You know, it's like what they say, like. You never know the last time you pick up your child. It's like the same thing with that. You never know the last time you're making a toy. You know, you think you're, I'll go back to this and you just don't do it. Don't I do. do I, I find myself always. Well, you can always pick up your child. Yeah, I always come you back. Could, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a there's a time yeah, you I've, put them down for the last time. You don't realize you're never going to pick I, them up again. Every now and then when I visit my family, I go, ah, you thought it was the end. And I make my dad pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you get back to it, Derek. I, I always end up coming back to my, sometimes 10 years later, but I'll come back to an old hobby. Because I always hoard my gear. Like, I still I, have that stuff, and I go, oh, let me, yeah. let me pick this up I was again. getting better. I was on the cusp of uh, getting the airbrushing so I could paint Ooh, the figures, mm, like, make them really nice. Mm. And uh, I was starting to develop packages for them, too. Your packages at yeah. the last Comic-Con oh, you yeah, had figures so at? Nice. Were, yeah. yeah, thank you. Very cool. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go back to it. I think that, the, you know, I got these Joe Camel pep, salt and pepper shakers that I wanted to clone mm-hmm. and make, like, he looks, you know, oh, he looks like a yeah. 1940s gangster joke. He looks real cool with his, his little camel paws in his pocket, <laughs> just being real cool with the fedora. He actually looks like a Michael Buble fan. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or oh, a, yeah. a zoot suit, or he looks like a fucking dork. Actually, not when I think about it, but I still want to make <laughs> it. You know? I want to make like rainbow psychedelic Joe Camel. So that's the, you know, the pipe dream, the holy grail for me. I'll get back to it. Eventually. Psychedelic Joe Camel. Yeah. That sounds like uh, what's in those cigarettes? Cherry pop oh. and camels. Oh, cherry pop and camels. Think about that. Yeah. That's a good band. I'm a, yeah. yeah, five of them together. Cherry. These are the cherry pop and camels. Who's your camel? Camel. Yes, I cherry am. pop and camels. Zoot finally, suit camels. <laughs> finally, the parody of cherry pop and daddies the world needed right on time. Right on. <laughs> when, yeah. when was the, You're welcome. What was the last big cherry pop and daddy single? Are they still I think uh, this is the one. going? The thing is, Zoot Suit Riot. Yeah, that's I think what it's, it's, it's Johnny yeah. was into them. Johnny, do you know? <laughs> Squirrel Nut Zippers picked up the slack. So uh, I, forgot I, I, I like Squirrel Nut Zippers better because yeah, they have yeah. that song, Hell. It's a good one. In the, in the afterlife, afterlife, you could be headed that, for some serious strife. strife. That's, that's better than Zoot Suit It's Riot. very much better. It's a better band. Yeah. They shouldn't have been uh, Brian, in the shadow. Brian Setzer Orchestra could suck off suck and right die. Off. Yeah. Suck off and die. Do that when, first. When, uh, whoa, 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 you're about to die? Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Um, hey, before God, you, you go. suck this off real quick? Exactly. All right, you're good? Exactly. You're, okay, well, I'm finished, yeah? Yeah. Die. All right, die, die and you're dead. Die okay. now. Thank you. All right. Don't go you're before, gone. before I give you something. Yeah. <laughs> when I went to I went to the, the, the Padres playoff game on Wednesday, and uh, they, they have all these traditions now. Like, they had the first pitch. That was Tony Hawk. That was cool. Um, but they also do something where they have like the 
ceremonial ringing of the bell because the fire has like the church bell that they ring. Oh, like, yeah. We okay. Had the last three outs. Um, but they had the guy from Slightly Stupid come out. Remember that band? Yeah. And, like, ring the bell for that. So that was like the big get was Slightly uh, Stupid. But then before that, they got Tom DeLonge from the Queen to throw out the first pitch. So that's cool. So too. they're on a punk kick. Yeah. Okay. Or, if if we could each introduce these, no, no offense, but these sound silly. Okay. Arbitrary customs and ceremonies they're trying to introduce. If we could each introduce our own Padres ceremony, mm-hmm. ceremonial ringing of this or that or throwing, what would you guys do? Oh, I don't even know. We'll start with Garrett. Uh. I- Give Sean time to what, think, because I know Garrett's innings? got one. How many innings? There's nine innings. There's nine innings. It's not quarters. How nope. many players on the field? Uh, players? There were, there's also nine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Ceremonial. So like a halftime gimmick. Half type. Ta- Bring well, a fan hey, out. Hey, either when the game starts, halftime, or when the game ends, you, you do this. There's no real do. halftime, for the record, because it's just oh, in between fuck. innings. They have the seventh inning stretch. Okay, during the seventh inning stretch, they would just have some local ding-dong, like the guy from Slightly Stupid, come out, and then he... What did he do? He threw out a pitch? No, yeah, no, he yeah. rang a bell. He rang a bell. This is before this the is game started, though. Stupid. Okay. It's not... St- well, it's fun. It's slightly stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's to be to be honest, it's slightly. Uh, I would, uh, yo, I mean, there's a uh, uh, a baseball um, group. I don't know if I've ever heard of the Savannah Bananas, but they are like the Harlem Globetrotters for baseball. They've actually gotten yeah. like fucking yeah, I heard about them huge lately. And uh, they've been going to ballparks and selling them out, like like real like baseball stadiums. Uh, but they always have someone throughout the first banana. That's something they do before the game. It's like a fun what thing. It's the Savannah Bananas. It's a fun thing. Also, see, I don't get. Ba- see, that sounds so fucking milk toast and boring. That I you just don't. Are like, I, my mind hater, can't even. Bro. I can't even come up with something. Yeah. No, the Savannah Bananas. I feel like you have to explain it's a fun thing after you describe the activity. <laughs> okay, just, I regret like, bringing this up. But because. no, but the banana <laughs> ringing the bell—it all proves my point. And like my, I, like I'm mentally not engaged in baseball, and I can't even come up with a a, a, a gimmick. Well, uh, you could throw out like a shoe or something like that, like anything you want to do. Why? Did that because to George fun. Bush is on yeah. base. I don't. What <laughs> yeah, is George Bush point? is at home plate. I think they should comes. have like a ceremonial like pop fly. And this is what I think. This is my suggestion. Okay, okay. please they ha- take They over. hit up. They have a a person. They have to be Tom DeLong okay. or, or you know someone else so in the thing. outfield, and they hit him a pop fly. And if you catch the pop fly, the stadium gets like half off on beers or something like that. Like they get like yeah. There's like a prize. Your so everyone's genius. really hoping that that person catches this pop fly. Maybe it's like it's like you know a dollar hot dog for the night. Or it's something a fifty like that. fifty shot though that you're losing money for the stadium. Well, they would. Here's the thing, though. If it's a dollar hot dog, I probably wasn't get a hot dog before, but now but I'm now gonna. You might. Okay, you got me there. You got me there. I All don't right, know, Rocco. You got it. And then it'd be like, I almost got a fucking hot dog, but Tony dog. Hawk didn't know. catch the ball. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Rocco. Sorry. Uh, it, this is for exclusively for San Diego ritual. Uh, okay, any baseball team. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, because I just said that San Diego. I just thought yeah, they San should Diego. they should get a California burrito and both. A player from both teams as a sign of trust or whatever yeah. eat from both sides of the burrito <laughs> that's, like they put it that's up cute oh yeah someone holds it up and they eat from both sides and and they, it's just it's like lady it's in just the train. good yeah yeah and it ends how it ends we'd yeah yeah and if they do a little out. smooch it's good luck and if they don't they're they'll surely perish mm-hmm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the MLB Major League Baseball should introduce something, a concept called the Lil Dukers. Oh, yeah. E- yeah. Get get this. Every team in America uh, has a smaller team within that sits in the dugout of ch- local children. Okay. Oh. Okay. And they're known as the Lil Dukers. Mm-hmm. And at, at the end of the ninth inning, the player who gets the final out on the losing team, like it's <laughs> he has to strike out. On the, if you lose the game at bat and you get the third out on strikeout, they take you out to the middle of the field and they bring out the little dukers. <laughs> okay. And they all have dog shit. Uh oh. And they do firing squad. What? And they all yeah. they all pelt you. And you <laughs> you get what is known as the death by dukers. Can they wear gloves? 
The kids can wear any protection they want. Okay. But basically, the okay. last player who who costs the game on the losing team gets firing squad by the little dukers. Mm -hmm. They have like a batting glove on their throwing hand yeah. and a pitcher's a catcher's oh, they, mitt. They can do whatever they want. They can like well, throw just the thinking, duke up into the air and like hit it with a baseball yeah, bat right yeah. at the guy. I'm thinking yeah. if I if, if I you, were a little duker, yeah. I'd have a catcher's mitt because it's bigger, just full of shit. You know, and what, then I could grab into yeah. it. Really. What they'll do is they'll chain the player to a giant <laughs> piece of wood that has a painted target on it's it. Crucified. I like yeah, this. Hands up and like spread eagle so he can't protect himself at Every all. Every game. Yes. So like if San Diego's playing uh, LA and yeah. LA loses the and the, the, the LA uh, player strikes out, they chain him to a target and they bring out the San Diego Lil Dukers. Oh, wow. To, to give him death by Dookie. I that's, didn't know you're such a sports fan, Derek. That's, that's fantastic. That's a good idea. idea. That's a thank you. Strapped up, duped I mean, out. <laughs> Duke down. Exactly. Duke Getting Duke. Put your Dukes Then they can see like little Dukers like memorabilia and With shirts. With a little poop emoji. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the whole stadium would start chanting, dan, 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 put Duke, your Duke, Dukes up, put Duke, your Duke, Dukes, Dukes up. Put. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Can you, if you're the person whose fault it is that they lost and you're going to be Duked, yeah. can you fight back against these little fuckers? <sighs> I don't think you can fight back, but I think that if you can run by foot and exit the stadium, you can, you can escape the death by Duke. So as soon as the game over, it turns into a foot chase. Everybody on, you know, the winning team wants to catch that yeah. loser and they kind of like drag him back, kicking and screaming um, to the Duke zone, whatever you call yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. target. Kind of like, zone. you know, within the, 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 the dirt mm -hmm. infield. Yeah. So they call it Sean an infield. They do call it. The well, infield. there'll be rules. You know, the Duke can't be any bigger than a, uh, you know, horse apple, an, uh, a horse apple, an orange or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to hurt anyone. It's just to humiliate <laughs> sure. them. Uh, but the audience, so exactly. they're going to try to stop that uh, person from running out. You know, they're they're gonna they're gonna make sure the Duke. Audience, is, the audience can't get involved. Well, what, yeah. they're not gonna can't block the exits if he tries to run this past. Is a, this is a spectacle. This isn't you know. This Here, is yeah, entertainment. This is not like yeah. You're thinking of like the gladiator like ring. It's not like that. This is, a, well, this the, is professional kill, baseball. This isn't Gladiator 2. They're going to kill him, he said. Okay. Yeah, uh, no. It's that's just what, called death by death. Yeah, no, oh, that's really what they good. said. Someone's actually, actually going to kill him. No actually gonna, Garrett. I thought this was like no. a documentary. No, that's what they a said when Will Smith slapped uh, what, uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Killed him. Could have killed him. He could have killed him. Could've, he could have. He, he played could've. Muhammad Ali. Yeah, he was yeah. really strong. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bad scene. Did you see that? I Dude, did. Johnny, we have a clip of that. The <laughs> sl he slapped him. Whatever. Well, next week. The Savannah Bananas, if you are wearing a uh, banana jersey and you go to the game and you catch a foul ball, it counts as an out for the team. So the team's all happy for you. It's That's only dope. them? Yeah. Well, it's why? awesome. It's so much fun. So there is audience participation. Now. Yeah. Getting mixed signals. On this well, I never said there wasn't. You never asked me. I, this I didn't know sport. if it was fun. It's fun. Just listening to you describe it, it was unclear. Okay, well, I, well now I'm we not great at describing things, but it's very fun. When you keep saying Savannah Bananas, it just sounds like a Twitch streamer I'm not familiar with. <laughs> yeah. Foreskin Valorskin. Yeah. Kind of it's yeah. like, oh, do you sub her? No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. Fair enough. Does she jar her farts? Why is that what the first thing I always go to? Well, <laughs> hey, if you're enjoying this show, you can support us uh, and everything we do here by going to shop.mega64.com and pick yeah. yourself up some merchandise. Uh, do we still have merchandise on sale the, from 64X? Yeah, the 64X 2024 merch drop is still in effect, but nice. only a little bit longer. So, so jump get on, on that now, if you didn't. Get the blanket. It's getting colder out there. Get the Tuesday shirt and get the 64X exclusive shirt. Uh, those are going hot, and they're on different colors. That's like the best. So 64X the, was just this past the weekend. The pack, or the, what do you call them? What's the cool way to call Cross them? Cross body bag. That's it. That's way cool. As I demonstrated on the show. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a hot item. Yeah. What's that, Derek? Uh, no, it's all good merchandise. Oh. It, was a, it was a line by line description of everything we got. It was very nice. Yeah. I think was, we were just saying 64X was only days ago. 64X was and, uh, last Saturday. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. I can't believe it's already tomorrow, Saturday. Like, it feels like we just did that. If was you, it, on it was Sunday? on Sunday. Oh, it was on Sunday. It was on that, Sunday. Okay, so Excuse that helped. Me. That helped a little bit. Well, that's no, the I thought that too. That I thought that too. Enough about that because in just a few weeks, it will be an even better stream. Wow. Coming out, which is going to be Mega 64 Interactive Halloween Hell Festival yes. 2024 coming to you <laughs> on October 26th, which is a Saturday. So yeah. mark your calendars. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be 
very spooky. So spooky. And very entertaining. We hope to see you there. Yes. Is it uh, spooktacular, fair to say? It's kind of like a play on is spectacular. That cap- is that like you know, a copy written? Spooky. Maybe we shouldn't I, use that. I don't, I don't know who came up with that. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck it. Yes, it is. Fuck. All Confirmed. right. Confirmed. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. So show up. Can't wait. Mega 64 Interactive Halloween Hell Festival 2024, October 26th, Saturday, starting at noon. Yeah. We'll see you there. Do you I wanna, had, oh. No, say I had so much fun doing 64X. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, I had, I always love doing the fake panels. Mm-hmm. The second we started the immemorial panel, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm fucked. I cannot. That was dude, definitely my favorite that, part of the night. I almost, I thought I was going to throw up. Yeah. I was like laughing so hard. That was, I didn't know how that was going to work because that that was uh, untested. So it was kind of like, uh, okay, uh, yeah, I'll, you know, me and Garrett just did our part. Like, all right, yeah, gut health. Yeah, don't let her rip. Okay. And then I was like, I don't know how they set up the, the other part of it. I hadn't seen that at all. Mm. And when that's, I was unprepared. I came in to like just change my shirt. And I it I almost jeopardized the entire stream because I couldn't stop laughing. Like, I, I, I. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought I knew everything that was going to happen, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to break or anything. And then that one I was got me. fucking cackling. It was over hilarious <laughs> because Johnny, I think you made all those sounds and effects, right, Johnny? So Once good job on that. Up, but man, man I, there was a solid three days of just fart sounds coming from Johnny's office. <laughs> yeah, I never heard. Somehow I missed that. So I, I was yeah. in the dark and... Uh, that part got me. Oh my god! That was my favorite bit of the night for sure. It was yeah. it was hard to hold back just even being in the room. And you two on stage. I mean, me and Rocco had the easy job set up, and you guys had to. Yeah, uh, you know, I tried. <laughs> Try. I just kept. I kept. Oh, on the first one, you lost. I, it. I was like, oh no. Yeah, I felt like Jimmy Fallon, like breaking up for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it worked though. It was. I it do was, know. I I feel like some people may have tuned in late to that part and missed the setup. Oh, uh, uh, that the uh, farts were out okay. of our control. Some people, I you know, I heard feedback like, wow, that was really disrespectful of you to play farts over those videos. But it was like, hey, I was not in control of the farts. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was telling people not to fart. Yeah, exactly. I'm on your on, side. On your end, you did everything you could. The, yeah. I, I tried, you know. I just love the my favorite thing about doing 64X is like all the panels and all the things we've ever seen go wrong and we put it into a, our take on it right and that was like there's so many times that i've seen a panel where they can't get the technology to either work or stop working yeah and that was example of like yeah it works but i can't turn it off and now it's time for the next thing and now it's just gonna be all fucked up (laughs) and that's just a great (laughs) that's a fun gimmick that's fun um i i love that we got the um uh, twitchcon the broken back in there uh the foam pit yes that had been deeper but um, <laughs> no but that was great um i want to give a shout out to uh a lot of people i think maybe did not realize but um that defunct land segment first of all that really was d- the uh kevin from defunct land that was actually his voice some people were like oh is this an ai um oh rep- uh, recreation of a no, thinking too hard thinking too hard we just reached out and uh he narrated the whole thing he did all of that but uh, actually, Johnny edited that whole episode. He did. Um, uh, uh, Defunctland just gave us the audio. So uh, Johnny did a great job on and that. that. I mean, Johnny spent a long time. Yeah. I mean, that was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah was I, a lot I, of work. I, I was originally going to edit that. And I was just like, yeah, OK, we've got footage of old 64 X's. Just cut it to the audio. And that's that was my whole plan. But then I was running out of time and Johnny helped out with uh, and took over for, for me on that. And. It was so much. He went so much harder than I ever. W- I'm watching this. I'm like, oh, good luck. You're going to do the whole thing like this. OK, good luck. Uh, but he pulled it off. So it was such was a awesome. cool retrospective of all the years we've been doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Really awesome stuff, Johnny. Yeah. yeah. And really Kevin cool. from Defunct Land. What a um, get. And shout out to H Bomber guy and uh, Nirvana, the band, the show. Nirvana, the band, the show. And uh Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, what was that comment you said? I can't, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna butcher it, but it's like Vegas 64 is beyond parody videos because, oh, what was, it, was it? Uh, no, yeah, we, uh, we're kind of inventing a new genre. It's like, um, make other channels parody themselves. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and then we upload, you know, yeah, that sounds sick. good. That's like the ideal way to do it, I think, maybe. I think so. Um, so look forward to more other channels' videos on our channel <laughs> very soon. 
Yeah. New new strategy. Mr. Dude, Beast. I'd love to get a hold of Fred. And yeah. Direct new new Fred Figglehorn coming to the Mega 64 channel yeah. soon. New uh, Renetto video coming out. <laughs> I, I always Amanda bring that sings. up. And, it, and oh, it's like wait. Garrett and maybe like one other person Renetto. will ever get the Renetto <laughs> reference. But uh, what we're already doing Red Letter Media parody as we yeah. speak. So oh, that's, that's what, what this, this is. is. Pretty much got I mean, that covered. It, it basically is like the Nerd Crew podcast. It, you know, it kind of is the same. Back to the Future mug right here. It's oh, kind of like the, pretty oh, much shit. the Nerd Crew podcast. I'm wearing. Mm, I should dress like a Dragon Ball character. Fucking should have changed. We talked like about a, baseball like earlier. Forrest though. Gump shirt related shirt. For, run Forrest Run. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, like a nerd. This is, this should be the consumer show. That's basically what it is. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> I think we should get Fred in the video. I think it's the time is right. It, yeah, it's time for did Fred. He retire? Yeah, he's not Fred. He's Lucas Crookshanks now. Okay, let's get Lucas in that video. Well, he's no way, Lucas though. Crookshanks sounds like someone's no cat. He, it him. sounds like Harry Potter. He's huge. He's huge? He he's, be, he's beyond us? Yeah, yeah, he's even bigger than he was when he was Fred. He's Lucas Crookshanks now. I mean, Fred worked it. with John Cena. We worked with Danhausen. You don't think we're like even? With Fred? Yeah, John Cena and Danhausen are really like neck and neck. I'm telling who's selling more shirts, bro. Dan is Danhausen in the new Fast and Furious? That would be cool though. That right? would be kind of pretty <laughs> very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love your impression of Danhausen so much. I don't know. I wasn't prepared. That was good. I wasn't prepared to do uh, that. I love it. Mm -hmm. Johnny and I watched the uh Simpsons season finale. Oh, and oh. Uh, I wanted to watch and this. John Cena was in that. Was wow. he? Wow. Yeah. I John Cena is in everything. Oh yeah. I kind of heard about this. Was this like was this like a Halloween thing? Well, I, thought, I thought they started the season this way, right? So Simpsons uh, aired their quote unquote uh, series finale, not yeah. a season finale, a series finale oh. the other night, which was actually the series premiere of season thirty eight or four hundred, yeah, uh, whatever they're on now, yeah, uh, and. Why did we watch it? Do you? I. You just said you wanted. I. I had no expectations. I knew it was going to be shitty, mm -hmm. and then we watched it, and then I felt like, yeah, it was shitty. Was it? Oh. But did you really like it? <laughs> <laughs> he said he enjoyed it. He's saying he's, he's staying. He's, he's, he's giving it. the political answer because privately he was like, yeah, that sucked. Um. Huh. So I mean. You guys, Sean, you and me loved The Simpsons. I don't Love know about it. Garrett and Rocco, but we watched this yeah. like so much. I've been we watching a big part of my Lately, childhood. I mean, okay. Uh, Sawyer, her birthday party's coming. She wants a Simpsons theme party now. Like, it's oh, like wow. she loves it. Like, yeah, The Simpsons. I still watch The Simpsons. So, I mean, early Simpsons because the kids are streaming it, so it's on at your house. Yeah, it's on Disney Plus. So, like, okay. So like, whenever she's uh, I'm watching, she's like, "Hey, we want to watch like one through ten seasons of Simpsons." Like, always, yes. I'll definitely watch that with you. It's so, very interesting. I have not watched an episode of The Simpsons on honestly in probably like five years mm -hmm. where I just put on a random episode and I was like, yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> I haven't watched it like continuously since like 2002. Mm. I remember distinctly yeah. being like in high school being like, yeah, I think I'm done with this show. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. From uh, like me too in high school. I never saw The Simpsons movie. Oh, I'm oh, a, I saw I've it. only saw it because of her, honestly. But I've seen it. Yeah, I heard good things about it, but I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I saw it in theaters when it came out, and like the, I felt like the first half of it, I was like, "Damn, I shouldn't have come to this." And then I, the second half, I liked. I feel. Uh, I remember thinking it wrapped up kind of well, but it's not great. It's not great, but whatever. <laughs> it's yeah, it's fine. So the Simpsons series finale is it's kind of clever. I told while we were watching, I said I can enjoy this on a meta level and acknowledge kind of like the cleverness of the idea here. Mm -hmm. But on a humor level, this is not funny. Oh man, really? At all. Oh. And it, that's just my opinion. You know, maybe other people would feel different. Um, but the concept of the show is, again, on a meta level, this is clever. They're like, series finales are always unanimously hated. Yeah, sure. And, and they never live up to... Um, the legacy of the show. They're yeah. always dis they always disappoint the fans. Sure. So let's get ahead of the inevitable disappointment of when the show ends, and we're gonna do the series finale now. Before mm -hmm. oh, that's, yeah. that's I mean, gimmick. I like the idea. Yeah. 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 That's funny. So, so we'll end the show now, but then the show will go on. <laughs> okay. And they make a lot of self-referential jokes of like, you're gonna hate this anyways. They like make fun of the Sopranos ending, they make fun okay. of like famous endings. Okay. Oh, really? They take a lot of uh jabs at like 
the mentality that the Simpsons are not good anymore and like the fans are disappointed, you know, there's a lot of jokes are like the fans are going to be disappointed anyways, because as we all know, the Simpsons hasn't been good for years, you know, <laughs> okay, stuff mm-hmm. like that. They take jabs at um, Fox executives who uh, maybe like control the uh, creative aspect of the Simpsons and, and, you know, kind of hints and make jokes like, yeah, they're the reason it's not funny anymore because we have to cater to so many like corporate interests. They have Conan O'Brien come out to oh. host the series finale. Mm. Uh, and they make this gag that they had unintentionally, like they intended to end the show so many times earlier and they show all these classic Simpsons episodes where like Homer ends up dying, which was kind of funny. Like yeah. when he jumps Springfield Gorge, yeah, he okay. like falls to his death. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say this is the one part I did see uh, because someone clipped it out like on Twitter or something and they were like, they really did an, kind of an exceptional job matching the animation. They added oh, they more did. to that scene. They did, oh, yeah. wow. And did it, and it's four by three, and they really matched the old style of it Dang. pretty well, right? Yeah, they show Homer but jumping it was much the gorier. gorge. <laughs> uh, yeah, he falls out uh, and, like, dies. I think a skateboard, like, impeds, uh, you know, impales his skull. Yeah, and yeah. Like that. When Homer's <laughs> fat and, like, plugs up the nuclear yeah, power yeah, plant, yeah. they added a scene where uh, it fills up with pressure and, like, launches him into... Uh, into the sky, I think he might even like crash into something. They just showed a bunch of different episodes where he That's like awesome. could have died. Mm-hmm. Saying like, we've we've attended to end the show previously several uh, times, uh, but we're gonna end it tonight. Um, and we have an AI here, chat GBT, they call it hack GBT. And we fed it every episode of The Simpsons and it's gonna perfectly create the perfect final episode mm-hmm. of The Simpsons. Okay. And then you kind of like watch that episode hey. uh and the the course of the episode is it's like everybody is like leaving springfield and solving all their problems like comic book guy um i think like him and his girlfriend become pregnant i didn't know he had a girlfriend i haven't watched I, this yeah, fucking show in forever uh. mr burns dies and like wills all of his money to the power plant employees mm. uh mo closes his bar and decides to like leave town and all of this is happening and bart is like i don't want why is everybody changing why is everybody what, what's happening? It's a final episode. Uh, and then his 11th birthday is coming up. So he's finally oh, going to turn 11. Oh, that's wild. That's fun. But that's then at the end, end of the episode, he kind of like, I'm going to spoil it. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry if you haven't seen it. He kind of like wills himself out of that universe. And like he, you know, it's like he becomes self-aware that he's in a show and he like breaks through the reality and goes back to just being a 10-year-old boy. Uh, so the Simpsons will like continue on hmm. forever. Okay. So it was kind of on a meta level, just, you know, you're like, oh, how are they going to, what are they going to do with this character? What are they going to do with that character? Oh, they're becoming self-aware. But was I laughing? Like, eh, not really. Yeah, but, well, I will say, like, what series finale do you really laugh at? You know, I think that's, like, the whole, the gimmick is kind of, like, that's funny enough, I guess. But, yeah, I know what you're saying. Whenever she would watch, sort of watch newer episodes, I wasn't laughing. Like, it's like, I don't, you know, every now and then there'd be a joke that'd be good. You every know, now and then. You know, the most jarring thing was this actually, like, freaked me out. Yeah. This, like, fucked my day up. The the voice actress of Marge Simpson. Oh, oh no, I, I know about this, Dude, too. Yeah. She, can't, she can't do that voice. No, no she's suffering. Really? Yeah. Do you remember, Garrett, when it would be Marge's mom in the episodes in oh, the old days? cigarette smoker. And, well, yeah, it, but it sounds like her soul has been sucked. It out. sounds yeah. like that. It's, yeah. it's, oh, man. Hi. Man, Bart, your birthday is coming up, it's, sweetie. It's, it's really yeah, like it's that. that. It's oh, that. No. You have to remember to invite all your friends to your party. I mean, everyone Part sounds general different, levels. but yeah. she is... Yes. Especially is like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it sounds like they're hurting her. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it does. Oh, like, this it is does. Her. Leave this her alone. Yeah. It really does. Oh, oh. Bart. Bart. I, uh, Leave I her mean, be. I you can't know. find my robe. It's like <laughs> you, that. It is like that. You said that there were parodies of other bad final episodes of TV and in this final episode. Did they, because I have one that sticks out in my mind as being like the worst final episode, and it's the Seinfeld finale. Yeah. did I was about to bring that up. D- yeah, do you guys have one? Uh, the worst ending uh, to a, a show? A worst episode to television. Uh, There's one, like people will say they hate the lost ending, but it's like, I love that. that did they reference Seinfeld? Uh, they just, uh, I don't know. He's in like, sorry, yeah. 
He, yeah, they brought up, he said, they yeah, brought they brought it up. Yeah, yeah, they brought up, like, they showed, I think, the poster for Seinfeld. They brought up Lost briefly. They brought up Sopranos mm-hmm. briefly. Okay. And I can't remember. Maybe We've, we've referenced I mean, the three big Game ones I was thinking of. Is, yeah. That's yeah. a very Famous recent one. For that. And yeah, then, you're right. You're right. Uh, the show, I know, the show How I Met Your Mother was huge on, like, that was a huge. I always heard that was. Is your question, show. is there one we like? or is No, is there, I mean, one that we hate. Just one that you guys just thought was, because, yeah, I remember even as a kid, the Seinfeld one, I, I was hyped for. Yeah, me too. I watched that show pretty regularly. And yeah. then it was like, oh, it's ending. This is this is gonna be great. And they go to like jail. <laughs> yeah, it's so. I remember the dumb. rumors before the Seinfeld finale. <laughs> for for a lot, I didn't even watch that show. And every magazine that I read, everything always had speculation. Like we hear there's they're going wild. Like there's an alien abduction, and it's like <laughs> it's gonna go so far out there. Well, uh, this other thing says it's gonna be like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, like, he's of Oz gonna is go. A big that rumor. was a big rumor, yeah. and then yeah, it happened. And it was like uh, we're in a courtroom. It's the dumbest thing because it's the show about nothing, and the last episode something happened. It's like well, you shouldn't. It should have been. It should have been the same shit. <laughs> like Kramer stole Jerry cereal, and that's the ending because yeah. that's what that show was about. It was about fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah, see you tomorrow. Like, yeah, well, yeah, right. Yeah. Like it should not have been a big farewell send off. It should have just been like another episode. I I think I'm the only one who kind of doesn't mind the Seinfeld ending. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I hated. It. I yeah. I was invested because I never watched it. Because the show. what else are you gonna do for Seinfeld? You know, they've been trying to make this TV show for years and years and years. They finally have their show picked up. And then on the way out there, I think the the one part for me is they go to jail for this stupid, this stupid thing. Yeah, like, they're not helping. The good Samaritan law. Yeah. Because they're yeah. just like laughing at this guy who's getting like mugged, mugged? or his car yeah. stolen or something. Um, but, you know, they find a way to bring back all of these characters who have been fucked over by these four people over the past like nine seasons. Mm-hmm. So I think that's like a Some pretty revenge. like decent way to kind of like put a cap on the story, you know, okay. cause it is a show about nothing. And they found a way to, with that episode, kind of tie all of these ep- stories about nothing together into one like central, like, well, this is what it all led up to, mm-hmm. you know, they were jerks this whole time and now they have to pay the price. They have to go to jail. I don't know. This is them going to jail is like, okay. Uh, but having it described that way, that's interesting. Derek's like, got a point. I see that angle. He likes it. But I, again, I didn't really watch it that much. So Do you have yeah. one though that you're just like, yo, worst fucking ending uh i'm trying to think not really most most shows if i really like them by the time they end i'm like oh cool yeah uh you know what you know what show this is gonna sound really weird uh i don't think i've ever brought this up on here they did a snowpiercer tv show yeah Mm. and that was anytime i would like visit my family that was the show they would oh come watch the next snow so i saw the whole show and uh that just ended that they finished a season um right before i think the pandemic or something and then uh warner brothers went through their whole thing where it's like they just started throwing away shows oh right right and movies like batgirl and yeah. things like that so they finished the final season of the show and then uh we're not doing scripted anymore what? on tnt uh we're not doing scripted oh, no and so they they literally tossed it so this just this year amc went hey do you still we'll air that like what are you doing with that and they aired I saw it, it and being that advertised again yeah that had a real dud. just dud uh, finale it was like no someone's gonna launch a missile that's gonna make the world even worse the Things were frozen. Oh, it's going to be even worse than that if they launch this next thing. <laughs> Hold on. They're unscrewing a panel on the missile. Oh, no, they launched the missile. Wait, look. Bink. All right. I, that panel I unscrewed, it couldn't, uh, didn't work. So uh, <laughs> so the missile, it didn't launch. Oh, okay, good. It, it, like, it sounded they like- all, and they all get dinner like, yeah, we did it. Oh, okay. You know, Damn, it's nice. It's, I pictured Bob Newhart <laughs> saying that when you were saying that. Uh, the, uh, uh, the that panel. panel. It I, was uh, just so nothing. It was like, oh, no, they launched the missile. Don't worry, I unscrewed that thing. See? Okay. Think. Damn. All right. I, yeah. I love Jennifer Connelly, That's but I, I couldn't even bring myself to watch that show. She was barely in it by the end. Really? I, I think she was busy, so they kept saying, oh, she's off, she's off in the snow. Is that her? <laughs> she's yeah, piercing. she's doing snow stuff. She's piercing it. She's piercing the snow. Yeah, over there. she's looking for stuff out she's there. A oh, real she's real snow piercer. Yeah, uh, was, I rarely yeah. watch a show to its finale. I feel like they, mm. you know, shows go on forever, and eventually yeah. you just get worn out. Yeah. Um, so rarely do I follow a show all the way to its conclusion. For me, I guess I would say Game of Thrones. Yeah, but by the time that finale rolled around, I was already you were already there. It's such <laughs> yeah. like. 
uh, hate watching that show every week. Just like the whole final season, every single episode was like, this is garbage. Mm. I, and I actually enjoyed because I felt like everybody on the internet kind of agreed. And there was mm. this whole like community and camaraderie about how much we all hated how the show was ending yeah. that it tr- almost turned into the, this like positive fun community thing to come together and just shit on the show yeah. as yeah. a group. But yeah, objectively, I think when you stand back and like watch it again, you're like, yeah. Oh my God, that I is mean, like, it's so bad. Jenny and I watched that every Sunday night for years, for years. And then finally the last episode aired, we watched it together. Like we always did. And then it ended. We didn't say a word about the show. We're like, want to go to bed? And we just brushed teeth. And we've never once even talked about it because it was so <laughs> nothing. Just that it was like, there's no need to have a conversation bland. about this. It's over. Let's just move on and brush our teeth. I feel Who like cares? the show died way before the final final episode. And sure. then the episodes leading up to it were wrapping up these massive storylines in the worst ways way. that I thought were really disappointing. Mm-hmm. But by the time it actually was the final episode, it was like, I was just so beaten down at that point. Probably like you just like, ah, fine. It's over now. <laughs> yeah. It's finally over. I will say though, I completely agree with you, Derek. Uh, I binged Good. that show. Thank you. I binged that show just so I could watch that final season live with everybody. Yeah. Just thinking like, oh, this is the biggest show ever. You know what? Fuck it. Let's watch it all. And I had a great time watching it. Uh, you know, there were highs and lows, but overall had a great time watching it. And then when it got to those last episodes, it really was like one of the most fun times ever. <laughs> like, I, I like I could see what everyone was talking about, but I also didn't have the year's investment. So mm-hmm. I was kind of just cackling mm-hmm. that it was going that way. But it was a communal experience. Everyone was, what? What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> damn, this is a blast. You like, this is great. Wild though is that was the biggest show on the planet for like five years. Yeah. And, and now it aired, and now no one talks about it. Is it. it is clearance forgotten. It is clearance Game of Thrones Funko Pops at Burns and Noble. Yeah. It Bargain is. Bit it, it, was out of here. The, it was the. It was the biggest <laughs> property in the world. Yeah. To no one gives half a shit about right. it. It was like, <laughs> um, you know, a product of its decade and time moves on. Yeah. You know, and it, yeah, I'm excited. To, well, it's funny because I read about like the fan base for George R. R. Martin, and I think they've all accepted that he's never going to finish those books. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I went into like the subreddit for Game of Thrones and I saw this discussion. It was like all the true fans know that he will die without finishing this book. Don't get because people are always yeah. like, when is the next book coming out? Yeah. I just started reading this. And should I even get invested? Like, are the books going to get finished? And people were like, if you're a real fan, you've accepted that this series is not going to be finished by him. He might pass away. We lost the light. I'll we fix that in it. a second. Yeah, he'll it. pass away and this maybe somebody cooler. will take his notes and finish the story like what happened with the Wheel of Time. Uh, finished mm-hmm. by uh, Brandon Sanderson. Oh, yeah, but that's never as good when they... Uh, people, people, I know. think, like The Wheel of Time. I uh, read... Uh, the 14 book series. Yeah, so. see, I read The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Thanks, Garrett. The the first three books was oh, written by, by Steve Larson. Yeah, but then his son, I think, did the other ones. But I once I found that out, I'm like, I'm good with the three. I got, you know, I don't need to keep going. What I, happened? That's so weird, Garrett. I hope George R. R. Martin uh, at least gets another book out, you know, maybe even two, because I just can't see it happening. This one hasn't been out since the show aired, right? Like, gosh, I looked it up, but I think, yeah, it came out in like 2012 or something. Yeah. So it's book. been like 12 wow. years. It's been a while. Wow. He, yeah. And he's, he said, like, I got yeah, I'm like stuck in the middle. I don't know where to go or something like that. Right. Like he just doesn't know what to do. I think that, you know, and maybe you can relate. Because I feel this way even with like Mega 64 sometimes. But when you get a fan base, the pressure to make them happy becomes so big. Yep. You kind of get in your own head yeah. about like, is this good enough? Mm-hmm. That's what I think is going on. It's like, yo, everyone wants this book so badly. And There's now so way much pressure. more people because the show is so big. And, yeah. the books. and he saw what happened with the show yeah. and how disappointed the fans were. You know, it's funny. Like the dudes who wrote the show, David Benoit. And yeah. The other one, yeah, D and D is what I think what they went by. Mm-hmm. Their credits like suck. Mm. They did like they did not do anything great before that show happened. Really, and they did that sh- show, and then they had the world was their oyster, and then they fucked it all up, and now yeah, they have and, nothing and, again. And I, they were just taking George R. R. Martin's story and then just like transferring it into a show and being like, "Look how fucking good we are." Mm-hmm. And then when that ran out, it was like, ah. Uh, 
now you get to write it yourself. Let's see how good this uh, is. Uh, yeah. And uh, we kind of saw what happened. We saw what happened. And the funniest part is still that there were rumors like, yeah, they're kind of HBO wanted more episodes for the final season, you know, because the yeah. final couple seasons, I think, were short, relatively. Were yeah, short. they were six instead of 10 or something. Yeah. And uh, HBO wanted more episodes, but the rumor was that those guys were like, hey, we're right. We got, they gave us Star Wars. So we're wrapping this up and moving on to that. And oh, then, and right. then they bungled the end of that and then did a talk about how, well, you know, fantasy is for ner is for dorks. So we, uh, we had to make fantasy better. Um, and then that talk I've heard is what lost them Star Wars. Like that, they <laughs> the said, cockiness. they said all that and it was like, ah, yeah, ne no, never mind. Goodbye. And so no, they didn't do anything. To get really nerdy about like the creative process, I think Game of Thrones is such a literary story and a book is so different from a movie mm. or a TV show because a movie TV show is so action based. You know, you have to have these action scenes happening and, and big moments where I think a book is more kind of just like monotonous and like hanging out slice of life with the characters. Yeah. And they had so much of that to draw from from the book that already existed. But when it came time to make it themselves, I think they just approached it from a movie making perspective yeah. and like all the kind of literary slow burn monotonous stuff. I just don't even think they were equipped to create that kind of story. Yeah, no. And yeah, that and that that is what's missing in those last episodes. It really is the action beats and and yeah. All this stuff I'm like, damn, I remember all these little character moments that everyone talked about all the time and I'm not you literally see, I'm not getting any you had of that. TV writers trying to finish a book series yeah. and it just did not <laughs> yeah. like compute I'll I'll stand by I will defend I did enjoy watching that one battle episode the one that everyone said was too dark yeah, yeah, yeah I watched that with a bunch of people I thought that was fun in in the vacuum of that episode like it ended and I was like damn that was impressive but again the rest suffered because it was like the biggest threat you talked about the whole show was like done in one hit. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like I enjoyed the experience of watching that, but yeah, it was then, then the next week came and it was like, Oh, oh what, what else are we doing? Oh, okay. So that was, that was my only, uh, yeah, that was, that was a moment. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing too, is like you, you have this build up thing for six seasons and then it, yeah, one little winter is coming. I got, oh, I found the weakness. They're gone. It's over. Honestly, if they would have had it. So <laughs> that dude was, on the throne at the end, that probably should I remember have, been, we, have been better. <laughs> I remember we kept talking about that. I remember Derek specifically. We were sitting in the office. I remember you saying like, "It's perfect." The something to the effect of like, "It's perfect." Like they take the throne. It's an allegory for fucking uh, uh, <laughs> climate, well, climate change. change yeah. No, everyone was warned. No one did anything. They they fucking sweep the kingdom, and that's it. Like you didn't act. Like that, you know, I remember go, we were like, yeah, oh, this is going to be good. And then when the, that battle episode started, as soon as it started, they're like, it, in, they're just engulfed in darkness. And like, and then all of a sudden they're all overrun. And I remember seeing Brienne of Tarth like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Ah, going like, oh, they're all dead. That's mm -hmm. it. And then, nope. I figured out how to kill them all in one hit. <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, badass. And a god. Yeah. They should have killed all the characters you love that, that would so have sick. been the most like biggest payoff to, that's what the show is famous for yeah, yeah. killing characters you love and if the whole final season was just one by one like oh my god not 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 them no not that person yeah oh. and it's just every episode is another beloved character getting wasted uh and they have so <laughs> many opportunities to do it there were so many times where i felt like that would have been such a fitting conclusion for that character you know like mm -hmm. when um What's the character's name? Bran? Braun? The, the mercenary who hangs out with Tyrion? He's like fighting oh. a dragon. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it looks like the dragon kills him, but he makes like a 20-foot jump into the river just so he can survive to live another day. And then his character's story is pretty much done at that point anyways. Yeah. Whatever. I'm not going to sit here and speculate on how they should have rewritten the show. They just should have killed all your favorite characters. That's all <laughs> great. Who's <laughs> writing that spinoff, House of the Dragon? Oh, I don't know, but I'm not. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know anything about that. That's that. That seems to be still on. I don't it know. It is if it's still on. No, it's still going. People like it. I watched it. I think it's just as much bullshit as the final yeah. seasons of Game of Thrones. Yeah, personally, uh, here's the thing with every new movie and TV show that comes out. I feel like if it looks good, it gets high ratings, and mm, nobody cares yeah. so much about like because people are on their phones. The so little details attention. of like the story and stuff. So many yeah. movies I watched we were like, that was great. And I was like, well, it looked like technically it was a beautiful looking movie, but story-wise it was fucking stupid. 
Yeah. But <laughs> I, I feel like I'm always fighting people on that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. House of the Dragon is uh, it, it's, it's interesting not- because it spans so much time. Like it spans decades. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not really drawing from George R. R. Martin's story. It's just like the show. It's drawing on, you know, yeah, a diluted well, version of the He's his written story. a lot of backstory, but I do think that they are kind of just creating an original like story. That's from, from what I heard. From his I, world that was created. Trish likes it, and I've seen a lot of it. Like you said, very pretty, high yeah. production value. Looks like um, you know, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings quality. Mm. but I am so like, what What am I snoozing about bloodlines? And- My problem with it, and this is such a nerdy thing to complain about, but it's supposed to take like 250 years before Game of Thrones, 270 uh-huh. maybe. That is not represented in the like technology of the world. It looks like it's the exact same world. And I've yeah. talked to people about this. I didn't know it was a different time yeah, period. Yeah, and people are like, well, I mean, in medieval times, how much is stuff really going to change over two, 300 years? And I'm like, fucking a lot? Yeah, like in real life, yeah. and I look at that and see what happened like, in 200 years? That, like, well, that book, yeah, but now entropy's kicked that, in. So back kinda, then, it probably did move slower. That, no, no, I think that they had an opportunity to really make something interesting of like, yeah, in Game of Thrones, they had the ability to oh, do I got this. Oh, I saying. But that ability is not present because that stuff hasn't been invented yet or this technology doesn't exist. But they got to make it aesthetically look the same as Game of Thrones. It, they really watch do. It. Yeah. And, they, and they can't deviate too much from what Game of Thrones already was. I mean, they could, but they choose not to. And that's where I'm like, you had an opportunity to do something really cool here. And it was such an easy like slam dunk and you kind of missed it. This was kind of my beef with they did that Star Wars show, The Acolyte recently, where Mm -hmm. it was, oh, it's 100 years before even the prequels. Okay, well, think about the prequels, how they look versus the original trilogy. These are night and day visually different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like and uh, and then The Acolyte just kind of look like the the latest star wars movies i'm like oh, oh i thought i thought we yeah. were going like ancient some of it do, like like the jedi when they're walking around they kind of have this older garb on and stuff that was cool but then all the other things are like they look like they're on a prison freight like like in the sequel trilogy like it, it didn't aesthetically look any different i was kind of like oh. eh, all right yeah. i hmm. wanted to give that one a shot I that, still show, will. That, that show was funny because it ended in the it was like it didn't uh, once once again streaming show that could have been told in two hours spread over six or eight or whatever and then it ended in the weirdest there were like 10 allusions to other things happening they were like wait what is that you're bringing that up what is this and then it aired and it was like oh is this a one season thing or is there another season coming and then they announced nah it's canceled oh, okay i didn't even know there was another season coming so mm-hmm. oh, okay you Sorry know, to hear another, that. Another I, bad I finale. Yeah, it was not very good. Speaking of shows that I thought were good, and this kind of leads me to what I want to bring up, is that uh, I hear that, you know, spinoffs usually suck. Usually. Yeah. But Better Call Saul was the one that kind of, like, broke the mold a little bit. I think people really liked that show. Mm. Not as much as Breaking Bad, maybe, but they liked it. But then, Some people like it a, a lot more. Like, it, it very very different vibes, and some people, yeah. But then... You Laverne posted Shirley. this picture yesterday of you and Bob Odenkirk and what? Oh yeah, what I wanted to ask happened? you about that. Well, there's going to be a third. There's going to be another spinoff. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, what's it called? Rocco. What? Rocco. Yeah. It's uh no Rocco and his buddy is what it's called. Rocco and his and his uh little buddy, and it's going to be Bob. Mm. Odenkirk. I, yeah. It's not Saul Goodman. It's no, yeah, he's just like my. He helps. It's me Bob. Do stuff. He's playing himself. Uh, no, I went to see. Uh, they did a screening the other night of. There was a movie. I don't know if you guys ever even heard of this or not. I don't know. But uh, Bob Odenkirk, after Mr. Show in the late 90s, when that ended, he kind of just went behind the scenes. He kind of just was like filming stuff and just making stuff. He wasn't really on camera that much. He helped Tim and Eric make Tom Goes to the Mayor. Like He got that picked up and whatever. But one of the things he did at that time was um, a movie called Melvin Goes to Dinner. Mm. And it was just... He just shot it on mini DV. I mean, it couldn't have been. It was like the same camera shit we had back mm. then. Just like, yeah, who cares? I'm just going to like shoot. It, it's people like talking at a restaurant and they're each kind of giving their story. And it was all shot completely mini DV. It was not fancy at all. They shot it for peanuts. Mm. And uh, I, I that was like one of the first movies I torrented. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in yeah. that era, like learning how to like torrent was yeah, like, whoa. Was out. Yeah. And I just remember seeing that. And that was a really that was really inspiring seeing it around we were i mean we were doing like version one at this yeah. point and it was like shit I, I i remember being really like oh people are gonna want to watch it if it's just 
shot the way we have all we have is this little camera and then seeing him do that it was like oh shit you could do something with this yeah who cares mm -hmm. and uh so that was really cool anyway yeah they screened it they never do but they screened it the other night and uh at a theater and it wasn't sold out or anything but yeah. uh, bob just came and hung out whoa everyone that was in the movie came too whoa so it was uh the the woman who played who is Flo from uh the progressive oh yeah no way she's oh, just, Garrett has a thing for her she's yeah. just in that movie so she was there and well, i talked with her for maybe 10 minutes that's amazing uh, did she give you a good rate on progressive car insurance oh i'm set you are <laughs> she's like here this it tells you one accident Boom. like do <laughs> you don't it's like it. a get out of yeah jail yeah free you bump of. someone you're good Boom, tell them flows on uh, yeah but anyway uh it was really cool yeah but i was not mentally prepared at all walking up to the theater and bob's just standing outside the theater talking to people whoa he's in just like a trucker hat yeah so da 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 da, da, da. he had just come from nobody too oh yeah he had a mustache but he he didn't say if it was from that or not but he said oh it's for a role it's for a role it was like oh, okay but it was just doing there. a sequel to that action movie uh yeah, yeah. wow uh Nobody but I, I didn't say anything to him before the movie i was just like i don't know he's talking to me i'm not gonna bother I don't know. but then yeah when it ended he just stood in the theater the theater emptied out and it was like <laughs> me and maybe five other people that uh, caught on to like you know he's still just down here he's just down so I just walked up and was like, hey, and he changed my perspective on fan interaction. Okay, because oh, oh. here's I, I'm under the impression now, like we're not getting super physical since the pandemic. I don't know. I you know, I don't know. People go in for like hugs and handshakes and I give them the, you know, like, oh, I, I know limp you get oh, or the uh -huh. not your deal. You know, yeah. Something to like, you know, yeah, that guy went. I was not prepared. I walked up and he was like, what's up, man? How's it? He went in for like the fucking high five. He brought it in. Whoa, it was like, he brought it in? Yeah, I was like, what the, f hey, yeah, good to see you. I'm I'm rarely starstruck, but that was, I was like, yeah, okay. Right, I mean, thank you. Man. if I had to put a list of 10 people that you would be starstruck for, he would be on that list. Oh my yeah. God. And in Mega 64 uh, on Blu-ray. Uh, fuck. Oh, was we blew it. I had, I was had. your chance. Oh, no. oh, dude. Now David Cross is never going to get to see version three. <laughs> Golly. I actually, I actually did make a joke, uh, there, uh, not to him because he wouldn't have cared, but, um, I, that I was like, I should have handed in, I should have handed him the unboxing ring because he did a video. He did a sketch again, back when he was just doing behind the scenes stuff, he did a sketch where a kid was doing a magic trick. And, uh, and the whole time his parents are arguing in the other room and like they're like over a divorce and he's just, okay, so <laughs> this is how you do the magic trick. And that was the inspiration. I was like, that's really funny when you just hear a, you hear a the, whole fight you hear happening. a problem. But, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, he was. I was like, dude, that movie was like a low budget inspiration. Oh, yeah, man, we made it for peanuts. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Wasn't that great? This fucking guy wrote it. Oh, he's so good. Like, it was just the nicest guy. I was like, oh, dang. Man. So, yeah, I was freaking out. And you could tell I took a picture with him and it's not steady. Like, it, yeah, I, you're I, like shaking. I was like, thank <laughs> you. Good to see you. You got Odenkirk. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, that dude. was cool. That's awesome. But yeah, Melvin goes to dinner. I thought it was a good movie, and and it's so funny. Like every person in comedy that I like is like twenty years younger, just chilling. Wow. But Jack Black is just in it, like really talking about a dream he had. And he wasn't there. Like that. No, Jack Black was. Jack there. didn't. Come. Literally, I think everybody. No, Fred Armisen is in it too, but he wasn't. He there. didn't. Come and neither either. was David Cross. So ah, no, okay, not everybody. Okay, was there. so now I'm getting disappointed. That's but I, awesome. But now. I did meet Flo. For I like how. Myself. This happened, and then I saw you, and I had no idea. No. You didn't mention it? You didn't. And then Jenny was on Instagram and saw that, and then Beckett saw, because he loves oh. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, what happened? I'm like, I truly have no idea. Yeah, like, did had, you just <laughs> see him? I'm like, I did, but I don't know. I, I, don't <laughs> I had know. old school friends message me. Really? No, really. Hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. What? I I watched Better Call Saul. I've seen it 10 times. <laughs> What's going on here? I was That's like, so oh, funny. Okay. Yeah. No one's heard of Melvin Goes to Dinner. Mad about anyway. a movie theater, guys. Yeah, you gotta go to it. the theater. You gotta go to the shows. I, I guess there was uh there was something else going on. I, I don't remember, but yeah, this thing didn't sell out. I don't think, yeah, I don't think mm. people really realize what, what hmm, that movie cool. was, but it meant a lot to me watching it 20 years ago. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've um, I've slowed down on going to the theater. I remember I was going to the theater like twice a week day. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've really slowed down. Um 
but I'm still watching stuff at home. Like I'm streaming more movies. Mm, that's... And I thought someone here, maybe Derek, did you recommend a movie called I Saw the TV Glow? Yeah. You did recommend that. It was great. Did okay. Really watch I, it? I don't think I, I was here when you guys I, talked about I it. I watched it. Uh, and? But I didn't Uh-oh. connect with it. I I was uh, entertained, but and it's and it's rare because I I feel like always uh, uh, I'm always uh, defending a 24 stuff. Yeah, but this one really did feel to me just like oh, it's kind of just artsy for being artsy. So what I uh, think is that movie is an allegory for being trans. Which okay, I don't know if you picked up on that, but then if you watch it again with that context, I think it's like, oh, I see. I a missed lot. the lesson here. I see a lot of like what this story is about. Um, interesting. There, yeah. I I just thought it was interesting uh, having it. The plot is without ruining anything. Is very much like you really got to wrap your head around. It's heady, So right? the plot, the, without spoiling it too much, but to give you the hook, is these kids um, find this show that is kind of like Are You Afraid of the Dark meets Pete and Pete. It's like an old 90s TV show yeah. that they become obsessed with. Uh, and I think it even takes place in the 90s because yeah. they like to trade VHS tapes of it. Um, and it's two friends and then one day... Well, they're both, like, so socially awkward. Yes. Like, everyone is is really g- having a hard time connecting with people yeah. in, this, in this movie. And then one day, one of the friends just, like, vanishes. And I think, like, the TV, like, catches on fire or something. Like, yeah. there's some weird, unexplained circumstances as to why they left. And then that friend comes back years later to meet that person and basically tells them, like... Uh, well, I don't know if I want to say too yeah, much. Maybe, yeah. They they come back and they're they're a different person. Is it a horror movie or is it just a movie? It's suspense. A, it's uh it's kind of advertised as a horror movie, but I don't it's not like a like ghost is gonna get you, there's yeah, a monster yeah. here, but it is kind of like a spooky, you know creepy phenomenon. Yeah, thing. like it's what's definitely going that. on. Yeah. Mm. Um and there's an aspect with the TV show that is almost like a cosmic horror. In the sense of, you know, I consider cosmic horror as you start to question your own reality. Yeah, 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 for sure. You start to question like your own sanity. Like, how could this be true? The things you're telling me, if I believe that, then that changes what I've thought about reality for for all time. Yeah. Mm. The one thing I really did like about the way that the TV show within this movie that the kids are obsessed with, the way that TV show was shot really reminded me of like how we work. And it looked like a 90s television show. And it just reminded us or reminded me of uh, how we would make like the in five minutes stuff look Mm -hmm. a specific way. It's like these filmmakers went out and really nailed the aesthetic of making like a shitty TV show that has way too many seasons. It looks like Degrassi. Yeah, totally. It looks like Pete and Pete. It is very like late 90s, early 2000s kids. Filmed on a different format. Yeah, like TV show. They did a great job of like doing that in. But you know, it explores this idea of like, am I supposed to change my identity? Because that is really hard. Mm -hmm. But if I don't do it, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean? Like, what am I clinging to? You know, what, what's what's left for me if I don't mm-hmm. go through with it? This like decision you have to make that mm-hmm. that seems like really impossible. Uh-huh. So I, you know, I really enjoyed it. I got it. I really enjoyed it a lot, actually. Poisonally. Uh, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard of it. I haven't heard of it. Shit. Movie club. Okay. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I've heard of it. I, I wanted to see it. I just know. Is it on Max now? It's on Max. Okay, yeah. Um, I feel like I've, I've always, I never hear of H, any A24 movies. I, I, I never, I, I always miss those for some reason. Yeah. There's so many of them now. I just can't. You know. That's the thing. They're expanding into like streaming only stuff. You know, I was only seeing their shit in theaters and that this is like one of the first ones I saw like, oh, this is just like came straight to a streaming service. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah. And they're expanding. They started as like an independent horror production, um, doing distribution games now. studio, but now they're expanding. They're becoming like one of the most successful oh, movie studios for sure. oh, yeah. in all of Hollywood. Yeah. A lot of my favorite releases in the last like 10 years are a 24 films. Like the last couple blu-ray sets the stuff i bought was a24 i mean they're winning oscars and like it's like you know 
from being just like a one-off little or just like studio. The, now the it's new like, yeah, it's the like block, the right? studio. Yeah. Yeah. Savannah and Bananas are in the YouTube chat. Shout out. Yo, Savannah Bananas. Okay, this is going to be so awkward and embarrassing. Oh, here we go. Don't do it. Don't no, do no, it. No, let me do it. Let me just do this. Savannah Bananas, <laughs> you're coming to San Diego next September. I, you know. We should have Rocco throw out the first no. banana. Yeah. No. Hit me no. up. I will throw the first pitch. You will first, get. First banana. A first banana no. is coming. Here's the, the, here's the thing. Like a fun thing. Slip on that. Potassium I, Express. Here we go. I know. Now that you're selling. Now that they're selling out. I'm in. I'm in. They're selling out like. MLB stadiums, really? selling them out. It's a huge it's deal. It's that fun. It's yes, but here's the thing: is I would love to be a part of it. Now oh, yeah. throwing out a first pitch, you know, you, at that. this point they're so big they could get Tony Hawk or Tom DeLonge. You think? I think they could. I think they could. But if you would like me, a Sean Chatfield, I would be happy to do it. If you need someone to play left field for an inning. I'll do that. They did. Whatever they do you that. need. That's probably what, hey, whatever the Savannah Banana needs when they come to San Diego. I'm in. It's probably against rules. Roger Goodell get pissed I, off. Roger Goodell one. has nothing to do with. First off, that's the wrong sport. Secondly, right. it has nothing to do with anything. So we're good. I'm trying. Yo, Savannah Banana shouts out. Shouts out. Um, damn, I got. Yeah, all reach out hyped. to me and I'll let you know. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, good. Honestly, if, if it's a year wanna, out, I could be there. I just want to go there. to the game too. Like Johnny, that, it's sick. Sean, give Sean a block ticket, him. but I'll, I'm down to do the. Pitch. <laughs> this, is, give, this is distracting. Go ahead and block the bananas. No, in the God chat. damn you, Garrett. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, they, that's what he does. I could do that. I could do. Thank they you. They know I can you, do it. bro. Let me say. I'm up for it. Hey, they know. I him. legitimately would love to do that. So if you are for real, I will be there. How did they know the 69? Number? Because they're they're fans. I yeah. How do they know the number 69 is question? <laughs> no, but that's, that's what, what he I throw. I throw things at 69. Who I throw, told you? Who told you about that? I will practice throwing a banana today if you tell me I could do this. At, uh, at Pe Pekka Park in, in particular? Are you yeah. kidding me? That's pretty much my Padres ring, but now I'm just wearing a different jersey. That's fine. And you know, Rocco does want to be involved. So if you could throw <laughs> bananas at him <laughs> in some way, Rocco. let's do that. Let's make uh, a, a whole like. I'm good. I'll, no, I'll just no, do the share first the, pitch, the banana. Yeah. Legit, I'm, I'm, I'm in, all the way in. So you let me, you let me know. Can we get this podcast back on track? Oh, sorry. Is that okay. I, I mean, I tried. We're making yeah. dreams come true, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you know, I did uh, pose the question to the people on Patreon if there are any things they wanted us to talk about. I think we should go through just a couple of them. Yeah, um, real, real letdown last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what what happened on 64 oh, 60, we, uh, 64 X you know what uh I think we're all you know there's a time where during that everyone a lot of times they're are, all they're in character they're in character but we, but we actually we needed real questions and it was all like is Rocco's uh you know parky is his car toad is his car toad which favorite color like, which oh, shit to be fair <laughs> we could have specified a little better like, we, hey, you know we generated the bit we started the bit you know we started the bit and we just yeah. should have ended it dude but that's we, okay. we made our bed and lied in it yeah Sure did. Uh, I understand now. Mm -hmm. What do they got for you today? All right, here's a question. It uh, from uh, well, I won't say the name in case they don't want to be outed. But their question is the biggest thing. What is the biggest thing you miss about being on tour, and the thing you like the least about being on tour? Uh, I love. First off, I love being on tour, and I do. I love uh, never knowing what we're going to encounter that day. Like you wake up, and it's like it's just you're. I don't know what state I'm in. I don't know where I'm going next. And now I'm in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How did I get here? I have no idea how I got here. Like that kind of shit, I do love. And obviously, I just you know miss the family when I'm gone. Like I miss them like crazy. But that's me. That's me. What about you guys? Yeah, I thought that, you know, the best thing about being on tour for me was the ability to see America mm -hmm. uh, and just drive across America. Because if you've never done it, you you don't know what's out there. You know, I yeah. had ideas about what it might be like. And then being in the places I was like uh, surprised often, you know, the Midwest, Milwaukee and Minneapolis in particular and Cleveland, too, blew me away. Like, yeah. I didn't know what those cities would be like. And I was yeah, like, this, these places are really cool. Like I had a great time going out there. Driving through Wyoming was uh, interesting and driving through Idaho mm -hmm. and, yeah. and Utah. It was like beautiful landscape, but also like 
really fucking empty. Mm-hmm. Really, mm-hmm. you're just lots like, of yeah. space. America is mostly uh, abandoned. Mm-hmm. It's mostly just empty space out here. You kind of forget, like living in a city your whole life, how fucking nothing is out there. You know, besides like you go city to city, but to get to the cities, it is like nothing, yeah, nothing yeah. doing. It's wild. Yeah. Um, all, uh, the worst part about being on tour was, um, I think we have we have an actual crisis in this country with the hotel room situation. Huh. Oh, uh, with okay. the with the showers in hotel rooms, <laughs> the shower, the opaque. You, think I might, I you cannot, the same page you here. cannot get a uh, goddamn decent shower at, in any fucking hotel room in America. Okay. It is like one out of 10 hotels have a shower that is more than like a two drop per second trickle coming out of the... Is it pressure is the problem? Pre- Heat? I think that they have the like special nozzles low to, flow. to low flow to reduce their water cost. Yep. And it is like actively, if you have to spend weeks on the road going from hotel to hotel it's just like you're slowly developing a layer of grime that you can't wash off because you can't find mm. a, a fucking decent shower anywhere you need to get blasted anywhere it's that's so disappointing that's funny I, I that didn't go exactly the way i thought like I, on my end i was gonna bring up the showers too but for me it's not i i didn't have so many issues with it like not working or not a lot of them were bad but for me, it's more, I, I, I think all the hotels need to get together and talk about how a shower works. Uh, maybe that would solve that problem too, but it's like every <laughs> place we go, it's, uh, oh, I, do I need to do fucking alchemy with the two knobs? Do I need to, oh, this one, how does this one turn? Oh, there's a thing down there. Uh, you know, it was like, let's all get in one room and discuss like how it works. Like everyone had their own impression of how a shower should work. Mm-hmm. That, so it was more to me the inconsistency more than it not working, although a lot of them didn't work. Some of the hotels were surprisingly bad. We went, <laughs> we, there was one hotel, I don't remember where we were, but we showed up at like three in the morning, so it was pitch black outside, and then, uh, That's right. I, I don't know if I should even share this story, oh, but no, I will. I don't, even, I don't remember this. We woke up in the morning uh, when the sun was out and realized the hotel was next to a graveyard. It was on a cemetery. Oh, yeah. It was, it was on a cemetery. And I looked out the window, <laughs> And it's like fucking all these tombstones. Yeah. Still, it felt I mean, like a poltergeist legit, movie. It was yeah. like the hotel wall ended and then there were gray sites against the, right there. It was yeah. like, oh, we are on a and cemetery. I, we showed up so late and had to hit the road so early. I did not even sleep really that night. Maybe I was being haunted by spirits. And uh, this is the part I don't know if I should share. But, I think uh, it's okay. I, I stole a pillow from the hotel because I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to sleep in the van and I just need something cushy to rest my head on. I remember that. Mm-hmm. And the side of my face that with that pillow was on my eyeball started turning blood red. I don't know if you remember oh, this. Oh, I do remember that. When we got to New York, it was like, I don't think it was pink eye, I no. will say. No, we looked up what pink eye looks like, and it's like a blood vessel like popped you in would, your eye. You would know if you had pink eye. It wasn't yeah, pink eye. I don't eye. think it was no. pink eye, but my eye, the eyeball turned blood red. Yeah, and like I was blood, just like... Yeah. The fucking ghosts from that graveyard are haunting this pillow. Yeah, like I'm yeah. slowly yeah, being, haunted you. Pillow. being consumed here. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. man, got into your eye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that that uh, that morning um, again. Yeah, we didn't know that's what we were. Our hotel was next to. I remember waking up that morning to go. I'm gonna open the drapes. You know, let the sun in. I swear I could hear an organ. <laughs> <laughs> All the tombstones. It was like it was such a dramatic reveal. It was like. What? It really was like a twist ending. Yeah, it really was. We were there. Yeah, we got there so late. <laughs> it's time to go. Beautiful, beautiful hour. view. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna agree with Derek. The uh, for me again, less the less the showers being bad. A lot of them were bad, but more the inconsistency. Every one of them was different, and that was starting to piss me off. Uh, <laughs> but I love. Yeah, I pretty much agree with everything Derek said. I, I love seeing like America that you don't. You know, it's like shit, I forget this exists. I forget that exists. I didn't know this existed. Seeing all that every day is just so cool. It was so That's cool. a really yeah. The variety of, of life. Yeah. I think I definitely missed just being home uh, for the routines that I'm so accustomed to. Sure. So that was the hardest part is like, okay, break all your routines for now the next two weeks because it's going to be like a whole new routine. Um, that it's probably the worst part about touring but the best part would probably be that ability to hone in the art form tighter and tighter every night until like by the third or fourth night 
you feel so confident and so uh, assured that you're going to pull this night off without a hitch mm -hmm. that all of the worry and doubt kind of leaves you and you're just having fun. For, fun for me, yeah, one, once we hit that stride where we're like three nights into the tour, maybe we haven't even had that night off yet. Mm -hmm. That three nights of like doing the show back to back and we've rehearsed like all up until that point. And then really, you know, pulling the show off every night, but being able to tighten it up in mm -hmm. that second one. All right, we have little meetings backstage. Okay, let let this breathe. We're going to do a little more room for laughs here. If this happens, bring this in at this cue, and we yeah. change it, and we, you know, say something different. Maybe you guys run a different line that fucking kills me because I wasn't expecting it. Like that ability to transform the show uh, as we go through it and like really kind of sharpen it up. That's... Yeah. Just to have that uh, access, that's something that, like, man, I never thought I'd get that. Yeah, there's moments, and we've had, I think a lot of them were good shows, but there's a couple that you, like, feel it. Oh, yeah. Like, when we were in Everyone's Port firing Portland on all cylinders. this year was, like, I just, like, you walked, like, holy shit. You could just, like, everything was mm -hmm. killing. It felt yeah, good yeah. to be on. New They're York, laughing. It felt so good to be on stage. It's, like. Hearing the laughs every it's night. It's just, like, yo, that's, man, that's like, this part. is, like, this is dope. <laughs> it feels so good. So, yeah, fun times. Hey, buy the tour Blu-ray if you haven't. Uh, you could relive it. Yeah, we. If yeah, you the haven't farewell seen tour Blu-ray is on our store. If you haven't seen them, uh, check it out. It's it was a fucking blast. Just the farewell tour is the last laugh down now. Yeah, that's I mean, that's not in stock. Not in stock. But farewell tour is cool. All right. Um. Oh no, that was it. That was all I had to say about that. What is the quickest you completely gave up on a game? Oh, a question uh, from Patreon. Quickest. Oh, what was that game that came out? Like, is it Days Gone? Oh, yeah. The Motorcycle, the, the zombie motorcycle yeah. Zombies? I don't think I even saw a zombie. I don't really? think I got that far. <laughs> I rode the motorcycle, couldn't figure anything out. I was like, nah, forget this. And you never got your, never. your friend Dozer and he, his arm I, and the whole I fucking thing? I swear to God, I got 10 minutes in. Like, ah, fuck it. And never picked up again. Bro, your <laughs> wife's ring, that other guy was wearing it. Don't know what that, I don't know what you're talking about. You missed a whole drop. Uh, don't know. It, uh, this always pisses people off anytime I brought this up, but uh, near Automata. Yes. Uh, hey, because the, pro the prologue of the game is the one part of the game you can't save. Same answer. <laughs> so I have the same There's answer. like this 90 minute portion where you do this. It's it's not that hard, but uh, I, I have to die. I've never beat it. I have to die to like learn how to play stuff. I just do. I'm not very good. I, I, I'm slow. And so I have to die and figure things out. That's why I was suffering so much with like Astrobot. It's not that hard of a game, but every phase of a boss, I have to like die to figure it out. I'm, I can't pick things up. Mm. I just can't. Um, but anyway, uh, near Automata, yeah, I died like three quarters of the way in that prologue. And then it was like, wait, I'm I'm back at the entire beginning of- I died uh, at I've the boss fight. I've been playing like an hour. Yeah. That like, last you know boss? Yeah. And then people were telling me, it's like, oh, the rest of the game's not like that. Okay. But I can't I get I that far. I don't want to- I'm not going to do that again, though. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was like an hour. I don't, yeah. Just never. That was it. Same thing, man. Typically, if I'm playing a game, I'll see it through longer than that. But that one, I, I couldn't, I couldn't play that hour again. Hmm. Uh, Yeah. For me, so many, I quit games so fast. It's like, I shouldn't even be buying games. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Helldivers 2, I think I played one mission on and it was pretty you know i think that's a multiplayer game and i don't have anybody to play mm. like i'm playing it like a single player game okay uh monster hunter the one that came mm. out on ps4 monster hunter world y you know what i quit that pretty fast Again, too actually. i think that's yeah. probably more fun if you have uh yeah. friends that you're playing that with yes i'm playing it single player i, I built a i got a cat in the game palico <laughs> yeah and then uh, it was pretty much game was turned off after that <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I, I always fall off but not quickly I've, I've sunk hours into them but i've never beaten one yeah i think i i like hunted one monster in that game and i was like yep got my f that was fun i'll play this later never went back to it yeah i played the portable one like the, when they put them on 3ds and stuff i i played a couple of those and really enjoyed it and then i got that one and yeah did the same thing made the character fought one thing i was like oh this is a lot there's a lot here yeah, I never turned it back on. So that might be mine, too. Actually, that was um, even quicker. Yeah, I mean, I quit the original Dead Rising pretty fast, too, because I didn't like the save system. I guess yeah. that's fixed in the read read 
master yes. or whatever. So I'm considering it's, going back and picking that up, but I'm afraid I'm just going to quit it again. <laughs> yeah. mm. I died. I died. I played it at PAX and died. I went into the elevator that was like packed with 80 zombies and died. And it was like, oh, fuck. And I still had that same sense memory. Like, oh, I'm going all the way back to the rest. And then it started in that hallway. I was like, oh. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh, they changed uh, it. And then on, uh, I got the Super Nintendo Classic. Tried to play, I think Final Fantasy three or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I quit that thing and like, yeah, again the prologue. I think I died in the boss battle. Of the prologue. <laughs> oh, like, oh, dude, I'm I miss the classics. I miss them doing the, you know, the sixty four. They should do the sixty four classic, but like the the Super Nintendo classic. Oh, you're talking and, about the mini. Little yeah, mini like, I love that. They like, did the Nintendo, the a, Super Nintendo, the PlayStation. When you said, oh, man, I missed the classics, I thought it sounded like you missed, like, retro video games. Oh, like, oh Final, man. Final, Final <laughs> Fantasy 3. Well, Frogger. <laughs> but I do, like, that was a fun couple year window. Yeah. And then they stopped. Maybe because they had all the mods, or I don't know No, why. you know what? It, I, I can tell you exactly they what killed it. They could still sell 64 games. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, I mean, they could. Do, I, I think Nintendo 64, what I've heard, is still kind of hard to emulate. Mm. So they couldn't just put that out, um, from what I understand. But... What killed it was the PlayStation Classic because all of them were relatively cheap and, yeah. you know, whatever. And then the PlayStation Classic came. It was a hundred bucks, right. which was more than any of them. And then people got it and it was, well, some people got it. And then the, I got it. It sucked. The versions yeah. of the games were all the wrong, like European versions that were not the right frame rate or stuff like that. Yeah, there were problems. There was a whole bunch of, there was a million reasons. And then a lot of the games just haven't aged good. Uh, and I, I just felt like it was dead on that thing. You know, what's crazy though, is that like, they never restocked them. Like yeah. they, the, the original NES classic and then the Super, Super Nintendo, Nintendo classic, yeah. like if you got they it, you got it. And if yeah. you didn't get it, you're never going to get that thing. Like it's yeah. crazy. The, uh, the last ones to come out were the Sega Genesis yeah. classics mm. and they actually did, I didn't get them, but they did like multiple Sega Genesis minis. Yeah. And they would have different games. Yep. Oh. They 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 are the only people that continued after yeah. that trend kind of died. And it's yeah, it's a shame because they're great. Like they, they should do a 32X. They, next. they brought <laughs> in like old team members from some of these old games to like, hey, make the sound even a little bit better. Make yeah. make this like they were all brought in to make them like the perfect version. Help of those the games. emulation, give yeah. it that little patch. So it's it a means. shame that that got it didn't get as noticed after the yeah. I want the Dreamcast classic. Oh, oh, oh my god, totally. I'm still for yeah, that. That's what I'm saying like they yeah. were right there. They're like yeah, keep going, don't stop now. But yeah. they stopped. Yeah, they stopped. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what music have you guys been listening to lately? Uh, there were two big albums on the same day, like a week or two ago. We got a new album by The Voids and a new album by Perfume mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. And Perfume won. Yeah, I listened to The Voids album because I love Julian Casablancas. But the music behind it was okay, but I kind of... It was... It might, it might be a cool album for like if it's like a rainy day. Maybe. Like yeah. it's a real low key thing, but it was not uh catching me. Ah. Yeah, it didn't catch me either. I've been listening to I love the band Islands and uh they had I think maybe their last album ever came out recently. So I've been listening to that. Um yeah, the so Islands for me. Hmm. I feel like we got this question a couple of weeks ago, and I never have an answer. It's my most dreaded question on any. Well, whenever we work out, you're listening to like lithium. I just don't listen to new music, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just listen to the same thing I've been listening to. All right. That's fine. Yeah, with Spotify, I'm not really like listening to albums. I'm listening to like piecemeal songs and, okay. and playlists. And you stuff. played a song that had me laugh my ass off before the podcast. Here. Yeah. I'm not gonna play it now, but no. uh, <laughs> uh, uh, shit, I want to bring it up just so I can. Uh, yeah, what was that? It was called Tales of Taboo. Well, that uh, nailed I it. I can't remember the name of the artist. Good track you, though. That was a good. That was a yeah. That was a really good track. A it's, uh, you know, if you got a children's birthday party coming up, <laughs> uh, do that at karaoke or something. Yeah. Dude, I was at a kid's birthday party and the mom there was had the music on the sono, so going around, she's like, "Hey, oh. what should we listen to?" I'm like, "I don't know, listen like." Like 90s alternative, like why not? Who cares? And she's like, okay, so she put it on, and then she's like talking. All of a sudden, her like the, and it's the start of Closer by Nine Inch Nails. Oh, and I'm like, kind of like, where is she? I gotta turn this you shit gotta off. You gotta turn that song off. No, did and you I make found it her just in time? Uh, just could you, could you skip this track? Actually, I was like, oh, is <laughs> listening to Closer. She's like, oh shit, and I changed it. But 
It was almost a disaster. Tales of Taboo by Karen Finley. Check it out. Karen. Nice little electronic song. Karen? You know. Yeah. Play it for the parents, the grandparents. Get the mood going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get them um, dancing. Get grandma dancing. Yeah. Weirdly, I've been listening to... I want to... Yeah. I get so sick of music. Uh, listening. I feel like Spotify has almost ruined music because everything is available and it just gets consumed really fast. And I find that I'm just listening to music that sounds like all the same and it gets kind of boring. Mm, I don't know if you uh, ever have Homogenized, that. yeah. Yeah, if you ever just feel like, I've, I, I haven't heard this song, but it sounds like songs I've heard. I'm just tired of stuff sounding the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really fuck with streaming services, but I can relate. Well, okay. now that I do Record Club, it helps me because like the genres are always so drastically different. Because I went from Kate Bush and I'm listening to Usher, and it's like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. very different, you totally. know. So I kind of have that going for me right now. Well, lately I've been listening to uh, like spooky Appalachian music, okay, <laughs> okay. which mm -hmm. is like you know banjo and like washboard scratching, yeah, and like clap stomp, like old spooky haunted gospel tunes so especially for halloween it's uh yeah i really like i want spooky appalachian music feel like i'm you know in the texas That's a genre Massacre. you can type that specific yeah name. i found like a spooky dark appalachian uh playlist, playlist on spotify <laughs> That's That's so sick. sure i'll consume and get bored very quickly but. i i do consume most of the media i'd say uh in my life is just radio is uh primarily for me sirius xm yeah which is all curated by djs still so I'm avoiding that like algorithm based kind of, I guess that uh, malaise of like, wow, all this sounds the same. Because mm. I feel like if I listen to certain, if I'm in a mood, it's like, yeah, Sean said, I'll put on like the lithium station, listen to the 90s alternative stuff. But certain DJs kind of also have a flavor. So it's like, oh, I like, uh, you know, whoever, Bubba the Love Sponge. Uh, I like... <laughs> Yeah. Howard Stern. <laughs> it, honestly, I listen to a lot of Howard Stern or whatever. Yeah. But when I am listening to music, like those serious radio stations, them being curated by DJs, the Aussie's Boneyard station, I really like. Mm -hmm. um, and and that that vibe, I think, is mainly, you know, why I guess I'm not burnt out. But I'm not listening to anything new. Th this is like this one, Actually, there's been pretty good new albums this year. I just don't I listen. Say. I haven't listened to new music. You guys were asking me uh, that question, I think, like four years ago, and I was saying, yeah. like, like Clockwork from yeah. Queens of the, the Queens of the Stone Age? It's like, oh, it's 2015, Garrett. Third, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 2013. I've been listening Shit. to uh, that was this new. band called Mannequin Pussy. They're great. Oh, Mannequin really? Pussy? Yeah. Check them out. All right. That... The, unironically. They're unironic. Great. Okay. Check out Mannequin Pussy. Hey, speaking of music, Jane's Addiction uh, broke up, ended their tour because yeah. of a fight that broke out on stage Saw two that weeks video. ago. Have they broken up? Like yeah, the they, band they, is... They over. Well, that was like a reunion tour and they, you know, the tour's canceled. I don't know what the... Because they assume, have written, I'm assuming the band they is Well, yeah. they wrote new music. They, they have recorded and wrote new music uh, during this new meetup mm. and tour. Yeah, I think it's done. <laughs> we got two songs. <laughs> well, uh, footage has come out from that show where they uh, got into a fist fight and they have isolated the vocals of <gasps> Perry Farrell, the lead Ooh. singer. Yeah. Uh, now, what is happening here is he is off. I'm going to play the audio here. Okay. You're going to hear him singing like shit. I'm, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I, I can't hold it. Okay. Keep going. Jeez, TMI. <laughs> is it number one or number two? Oh, he's heard the audio. He it, didn't. He, he didn't, didn't confirm. I think Derek, he's heard the audio. So <laughs> it's, just, it's, just continue. What it's got to be doing. number. It's got to be number two. He's heard. He's heard the audio. Go ahead. Uh, the singer is out of sync with the music, uh -oh. and so he gets angry when the band stops playing because he didn't realize the song was supposed to end at that part. And then they start playing again, and he's not ready, and he gets even angrier. And, oh. then, the, and then the fight breaks out. <laughs> uh, if you're in the chat, let us know if you've heard this audio uh, before <laughs> we hit play. Oh, okay, there it is. You hear the man a bit in the background. Yeah. Oh, God. Ocean. Ew. I'm the talking baby on action. No, I'm talking. Wrong spot. On action. Stop. Say, oh. Oh. So I was like, he needs to go to the bathroom. 
That sounds just frustration, but yeah. check this out. Fuck these motherfuckers! The band. Oh my God. Fuck them! Fuck them! Fuck him! Yo, what? That's when he gets Dave, pushes Dave. Oh, Punch. punched him. That's it right Damn, there. Damn, what happened? Damn, killing it. This new Sinatra. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I think they're broken up at this uh, point. Damn, bro. You know, it's always tough when you isolate someone's vocals, but that's fucking bad. <laughs> Yikes. I mean, the singing is uh, one thing, but I think it's the uh, fuck these guys and then going in for the for the punch. Yeah. Is what oh. ended the tour. I'd- Who cares about Jane's Addiction anyways? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, same. Oh, and by the way, I was on a stream with Johnny a few months ago, and we were talking about big San Diego bands, and somebody in the chat kept saying, Jane's Addiction. And I was like, Jane's Addiction is not from San yeah, Diego. Did I say and San they were Diego like, band? yeah, look it up. And I'm like, okay. And I looked it up, and uh, apparently they are. But what? I, I've never I've, heard what? that. I, we have grown up in San Diego. Being a teenager here, you're pretty much aware of. Yeah, because they, we don't have that much. Oh, hey, it's Garrett, so close. Garrett, you're back. Yo. What, what city is Jane's Addiction from? L.A. See, that's what I would think. There you go. There you they, go. Apparently, they're a San Diego Apparently, band. they're from San Diego. Well, uh, I know uh, the guitarist is from L.A. What's it? Dave Navarro is from L.A. I, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't know he's from San Diego. May, is Perry from here? I See, don't know. Lollapalooza is not a... Lollapalooza was always like a LA San event. San Diego, like Blink-182. Yeah. That's from San Diego. And that is very well known. Well, and that's well Northern. Known. Yeah, San Diego. But that's what everyone knows. That's a San Diego band. Yeah. And that's why they they play all the small things at Padre games. Because that's a San Diego band. Sure. You know, like uh, Jane's Addiction? I don't know. What about Porno for Pyros? Or what? The other Perry Farrell... Oh, fronted know. band. I don't know. L.A. There you go. I've liked but it. do you remember that stream, Johnny? Hmm. <laughs> Dude, Oop. the Wikipedia has been changed. It no longer says they're from San Diego. Uh oh. All right. Good. Well, we've resolved Erasure. this. I think that our stream set the record straight. Hell yeah. Well, never mind. All is forgiven. Someone they're, updated it. They're no longer it. even claiming San oh, Diego. Oh, we're good. We <laughs> in, are good, baby. In we're real good. time. We're good. No, the guitar tech leaked that, right? Or the. The band, uh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because the band's guitar tech went on a podcast and leaked that. Off. Because okay. how uh, would they have that unless yeah. Yeah, that's? So I do think they are in fact broken up. Because why would that guitar tech risk his job? <laughs> Probably <laughs> fuck this guy. I guess he hates working for. He his seems drunk like boss. no fun to work with. Did yeah. you guys hear that David Hayter hinted he might be returning the role of Solid Snake? Mm, yeah, no. he said he tweeted something like he was in the booth for a role he's not played. Yes. Wow. He tweeted, uh, maybe well, this came out today, actually. I was in the booth today playing a role I've not played since dot, dot, dot. Wow. Well, so, Delta is not released yet. There could be some additional things they needed. Yeah, maybe he's doing more audio for it or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. When is that? It, does that, that doesn't have a date, right? Don't know yet. No, yeah. I, I haven't. I just know I want it. So I, I, it's like off my radar. When I, when I'm hype about a game, I, <clears throat> Kind of just stop paying attention to it. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, yeah, that's when kind of where I'm at when it, it gets here, man, I'll be buying that. Yeah. And like, same with Death Stranding too, and you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, any, is anybody gonna pick up Sparking Zero, the new DBZ? No, no. I don't think so. Okay. Speaking of video games, I I did just want to bring up the new Zelda real quick. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I that new Princess Zelda, Zelda. Uh, Echoes of Wisdom. Is they that finally called? made Zelda, girl. <laughs> yeah, they went. Well, time. They to, did it. Had to delete that Big. tweet. Um. But uh, no, did you tweet that uh, out when yeah. it first got announced? So I was already getting like doxxed over the um, whatever the Stellar Blade thing. Um, and then I was like, well, I'm not making jokes about that ever again. And then uh, I made it as soon as they announced this new Zelda, I made a tweet. Well, finally, final trip to Wokistan or whatever. I, I don't know what it was. I tweeted about they made uh, Zelda the girl. Wow. Final final move, you know. It's finally went woke, whatever. And it got picked up by all the 
same people and didn't, well, not didn't, the same people. Did, well, people who didn't know I was joking. Yeah, I mean, similar uh, people of similar. I uh, you 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 managed to offend people on both sides of the political yeah. spectrum in the world of gaming. Yeah, 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 and it was which like, is rare. I mean, how do you get? It, everybody to be mad at you <laughs> it, it, it had like fucking like it wasn't even like oh i got retweeted like 200 times it was like ten thousand times Yo, and they were funny. all like coming for me and it was like i had to i went i, w I went completely private it was the first time i ever had to lock down all my accounts because it was like i can't deal i deleted it locked everything don't want to hear about it and then yeah uh so that sucked well how's the game though uh, I played probably 20 minutes of it. And? Uh, uh, yeah. I they went woke. Minutes. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. Where's Link? <laughs> Where's Link? You said you were going to get this for your mom. Is that correct? Yeah. Have she is loving it. I thought she would. Okay. Uh, yeah. She, she uh, for uh, just a, a recap, we, uh, me and my brother got her Tears of the Kingdom mm -hmm. and uh, as a gift. And um, I think she was in the Sky Islands for about eight months where you have to... Um, uh, the tutorial yeah uh, uh connect five logs together to float across the river i think she was there um yeah from may until uh january the following year um so she got rid of that game this she's loving mm -hmm. she's and, digging uh, it but i yeah i i played a little bit of it it seems very cute i love that we have a new top down zelda game but it's very dynamic too it's not just you know um i don't know it, it, i i'm i'm really enjoying it uh the half hour that i played oh yeah um Johnny, you played more of it, right? But you don't have a mic. We got to get you a mic. Where's the mic? Is it in the other room? Uh, we'll use it in the other room. He doesn't want a mic. Streaming. He's behind the scenes. I want to hear from him. I don't give a shit if he wants to wow. say it or not. Wow. wow. Oh, okay. uh, he's behind the scenes guy. I yeah. think he's in, been enjoying it. I want to check that out. Little too. of that energy from our My uh, switch has a fan issue where it starts oh. like. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh. Now I like have to. I guess I got to open it and fix it myself, which is oh shit daunting. Yeah, I can still play stuff, but then it starts like making this weird. You know, I bet there's a guy you could take it to for a fee. I bet I could watch a YouTube video. You, well, you could totally yeah, do that, but if I'm you ever don't want to da do the daunting thing, I think there's some guys we know. Can't be worse than expanding a hard drive in a PlayStation. There you, you know? go. Just unscrew it, blow on it, screw it back up. I know I've got a project coming up where I just ordered some new analog sticks because i got stick drift like crazy on like two of my newer ps5 controllers yeah uh, i've really? said this before but the the switch is what's known for getting the most dri like people yeah. are like, oh, my oh, launch on drift. Yeah. i mean my launch yeah, me system too. definitely has been replaced and, yeah. and i don't know what happened that i'd never have had that happen to me with the switch but multiple times with the ps5 yeah, yeah. ps5 mm -hmm. controllers I, it's like oh the, i can't i don't know what to do it's like i bought a new you know, camo, it's a fucking cool dual sense yeah. wireless. And then it's like, I used it for two months and it's just been collecting dust. It's like, oh yeah, I should actually yeah. just throw a $3 part in here. and be uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, I never missed There's it. a little soldering involved, I believe, but hmm. I don't know the fan issue. You might be able to like blow that out with like a can of duster. I think so. Yeah. I think I... I think yeah, I've tried that actually. I think I do need to like open it up and get in there, yeah. but uh, it, I'm not. I'm too concerned. I just don't want to break it. You yeah. Know? No, I'm. I'm. I'm with you there. Are you gonna There's... try that new Zelda, or you don't care? Uh, I want to try it, but I'm weary to play anything on Switch. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh it's yeah. <laughs> Did anybody else play much it noise. though? It was just no, I haven't gotten no. it yet. Me and Johnny. Okay. No, I'm, yeah. not, I'm. I'm forcing myself. Sorry, I didn't have anything more deep I'm and insightful still on that. Doing Astrobot and Red Dead One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I never beat Astrobot. I, I, I just lost time for video games over the last like few weeks. But now, now I'll be able to play a little bit Jump more. Back in. Yeah. I'm working on a couple things, but I'm just kind of have to sit around a little bit while I, yeah, you know, export things. So I'll be playing a lot of Zelda probably. Yeah, we're not burdened this weekend with Los Angeles Comic Con. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That is which the, did we go last year or was that ago. two years ago? Two years ago, where we, we talked about my comic book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I showed an unfortunate clip of the PPS in that audience. Yeah, oh. uh, I wonder why they didn't ask us back. Looking up that Tifa statue. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Like, is that maybe why we didn't get invited back? But yeah, yeah. You that's that was by invitation there. only. I don't know. I thought we were just busy. Yeah. We'll go back. <laughs> It'd By be the a way, good fit for us. I think we should have a booth eventually. This would be a good moment for me to plug my comic book phobia. It will be coming out soon. Uh, so you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram for updates about that. It's mm -hmm. done. It's completely done. I just have to, there's all this like other stuff to take care of that I never realized. I'd have to, you know, so we've hit some delays, but uh, it's coming I out. I saw the update. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm waiting patiently. I'm just sitting on it, and it's so good. I'm really excited to show it to everybody. Oh, but, yeah. uh, I'm just uh, checking off all the boxes and all the technical behind-the-scenes work. So, you know, I know it's delayed. Sorry, everybody out there. Appreciate you being patient and supporting me. It'll be out very soon. Mm -hmm. Very soon. Hell, yeah. Um, should we uh, wrap this up and yeah. move into the after show? I'm ready to hit yep. to post-show clarity, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. This has been the main show. Uh, you can follow us on uh, patreon.com slash mega64 if you want to give us topics for any episode. And uh, you can also tune into the after show that is on our Patreon as well. So go over there. You don't want to miss the conversation. We have some goodies. Do we? We have like one goodie. Oh, there's you, one you wanna, goodie. You want to just look at that right yeah, now? Yeah, let's look at that right let's now. Just end with no. That. No. After show. Oh. Yeah. It's only for me, so. Lord Divius oh, it? okay. hath well, decreed it's it. For him. It's just one for me, so I'm saving it. Saving it. Going to be good content. That's how Divi does. That's right. Okay. See you next week, everyone. And uh, yeah, shop.main64.com. Support us on Patreon. God, we love you so much. Johnny, take us away. Fade us up. <laughs>